Thank you. Hello, everyone. So I'm Yves Bolognini. I'm project manager at camp to camp located in Lausanne. Um, so first, uh, a few words about camp to camp So we are open source, uh, open source, of course, a software company um, based in Lausanne, but also in Chambéry. Uh, originally, it was only in Lausanne, then Chambéry. And um, more recently, we have uh, offices opened in uh, Munich and Paris and also Alton in Switzerland. So Switzerland, France, and Germany. Uh, we have uh, four departments in this uh, company. Uh, first and historic one is uh, Geospecial. Uh, we have about half of our employees in this uh, department. Uh, business, we do uh, some solutions around uh, Odoo software, so uh, ERPs. Uh, infrastructure, so uh, yes, about Linux servers and uh, uh, Docker, etc. And we have a close connection between infrastructure and the two uh, other uh, departments, of course, because the geospatial and business need infrastructure always. Uh, the fourth department is subscriptions, uh, license, uh, mainly Red Hat uh, licenses. For the the three first departments, so we have services, uh, consulting, implementation, but we do also the support and maintenance and some training as also. Now, this talk is about GeoMapFish, so what is GeoMapFish? You have here uh, and, uh, our desktop interface, so it is a WebGIS uh, solution for, yeah, you know what WebGIS is. <laughs> I will m go m more in details. So open source WebGIS, but it's a platform, it's not only an application. Uh, you will see a list of features, so it's quite rich, and it's highly customizable. customizable. So um, it, this is already a platform. You can do a lot of things with GeoMapFish. Uh, we use modern technologies. You, I will go more in details later. And um, we use uh, several, uh, uh, we have highly interoperable, interoperable uh, with OGC services, etc. Turn on the light back. Oh, we need the light. I will uh, also show you a couple projects we've done. What is interesting also is that it's a community-driven um, project uh, platform. So it means that we have a quite broad community, um, mainly our customers, of course. Uh, the members are public agencies, mainly. Also some engin engineer uh, offices uh, and some uh, private companies. For instance, for geomarketing, also we have uh, uh, the EPFL, uh, the school, uh, technical, technical school in Lausanne, that is our customer for facility management. So they manage uh, the whole campus and the whole rooms of the campus into GeomaFish. The goal of this community is, of course, like every community, to promote dialogue, um, but also to have decision making like uh, what they want and what they want uh, for the next version for instance and what is uh, less uh, for less priority for the, the version after that um, specifications of each features so we we work re really closely with the, the community work with the, our users and our customers also it's a, also a way to have a to try to have a fair funding, a fair funding also between the customers. Um, it means that uh, if we have many users, many customers, many uh, customers that are funding our solution, so the, 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 the funding will be lower for each of them. And also, when I say fair funding, it's also fair for camp to camp, of course. <laughs> so we have to find a solution to be fair for everyone. And this is a model that works since uh, 2011. So the first version of uh, GeoMapFish was uh, out in 2012, but the project started in 2011. So this, work, this uh, works quite well. 
So about versions, um, we, we just um, released the stable long-term version uh, 2.4, and we are currently development for 2.5. Uh, just a quick um, schema here to, s to show you that uh, we started in 2011, 2012, and that uh, the next uh, LTR was released just now, and uh, will be uh, supported until 2022. The previous one was the 1.6. About features, it's only highlights because uh, we have many features, but yeah, some features to, to show you what we can do. Uh, rich layer tree with a reorder, a drag and drop reorder, grouping, opacity, time layers, etc. Um, powerful filters, so, so to, to show only a part of the data on the map. Um, external layers like WMS, WMTS layers, but external uh, uh, from the project. Um, a complete editing features uh, with snapping uh, on the web. Uh, elevation leader profiles, root routing also using OSRM. OSRM. Um, we also have a very powerful PDF generation solution um, using Jasper reports and 3D, uh, 3D uh, visualization. Um, at Camp to Camp we developed the, the open layer Cesium solution, the library to connect open layers to Cesium. <coughs> Latest developments that are quite new. Um, an API to insert maps into uh, external websites, um, AO uh, PDF generation, so it takes some time, so it needs to be asynchronous, so we uh, developed something with, the, with email, so the, the user can, s can get an email and say, okay, my PDF is now ready, I can download it. Uh, maps comparison, I will show you with a screenshot just after that. And story maps. Story maps is a way to to uh, tell a story uh, using maps with uh, added added content. Yeah, some uh, some screenshots about features. Um, just before you saw the, the the desktop interface, this is the the interface for uh, tablets and uh, and mobile. This one is uh, responsive. Uh, we also have this desktop interface that is not responsive because it's, it's important to also have a very, very rich um, interface for desktop and some features from desktop are not in the responsive um, interface. Yeah, I told you about profiles. So it's an example. So we have uh, elevation, standard elevation profiles, but also leader profiles. This is uh, uh, also a new feature for compa comparison. So you can drag drop in the middle and compare two maps and play with it. And you choose uh, in, the, um, in the layer tree, you choose which uh, layers you want to compare. We also have a quite user-friendly uh, administration tool uh, to, yeah, to configure everything about the layer tree, about the where are the layers, etc. Also, uh, everything about users and roles. We have quite an, uh, an advanced way of uh, uh, defining which layer, uh, which uh, yes, which layers uh, can be viewed by, by which uh, user and role. A word about software components. So on the client, we use open layers, of course. Uh, Angular, Angular JS NGO, which is a, a library that was developed uh, at Camp to Camp to uh, combine actually open layers uh, and Angular JS and Bootstrap. On the server, it's a Python backend using pyramids, and we have for some part of the um, of the solution, we have a, a special protocol, Mapfish protocol, and of course we use a lot of uh, OJC protocol. Um, 
originally we almost all projects was were um, with map server as a map generator but uh, now uh, more and more uh, projects use QGIS and some projects also with GeoServer. Database of course but GIS and uh, now the latest version of GeoMapFish is uh, all in Docker. Uh, first it was only for the build of the projects, now we use also Docker for the run part to, to run, run the project. And in the latest development, we added the OpenShift, uh, OpenShift um, uh, on top of Docker to uh, the orchestrator. And this uh, is, I guess, the next yes, next slide. Um, we always had a continu continuous integration for development to to be able to see the the latest uh, uh, changes very easily. Uh, but now we also have the continuous deployment with OpenShift and so uh, this is how it works. So the developer can push, uh, developer or the integrator can push the change in GitHub. Um, it triggers Travis so for to, to run the tests and run everything and build the, 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 the Docker images. It goes to Docker Hub and the OpenShift then can deploy it on the um, on the production or in the demo uh, servers. Uh, this is also interesting because the OpenShift will um, allow to, to have several servers if uh, <coughs> there is a need for high avail availability. Some projects. Um, here for EPFL, so this school, uh, technical school in Lausanne. Um, this is interesting because we change almost everything on the interface. So it shows that uh, we can do uh, what you want for the interface, not st stay with the, the standard one. And also interesting in this project is that it's not about uh, uh, communities, regions, etc. It's about uh, a campus. And so we have uh, uh, buildings, it's not the same uh, <laughs> level. And uh, also there is, uh, you can see it because it's hidden here, but we also have a, a floor selector to choose which floor of the building we want to display. Another project here, this is for a gas station company. And so we uh, we display its information, but not only in, in terms of layer, but also for each point there is a graph. This is for geomarketing. Also for 3D, here we work with the uh, country of Luxembourg. Um, so they have quite interesting data here with the the terrain, the, 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 the 2D data that is mapped on the ter terrain, and also the, 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 the buildings. And we can switch from 3D to 2D uh, quite easily. Very easily, actually. And for uh, I told you about reports also. We have PDF generation uh, engine. And this, can, this allows to, to have quite interesting uh, reports using just Jasper reports. And we can include uh, one or several maps if needed and have quite nice outputs. This is something for the, 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 the confederation, so the country of Switzerland. Okay. That's it. I'm a bit early, but uh, there's room for questions. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. I <coughs> Hi. Uh, can you tell me uh, more about integration with uh, uh, Jasper reports? So how is it done? Do you uh, make a report template uh, in Jasper report? and then just let's say call it from from map or yes or, it, it's or is it somehow more integrated than that 
No, the, the, um, the templates are Jasper templates, Jasper reports templates, uh, but we have quite, um, we have a backend for the Mapfish print because we, we uh, as I said, we have this email system for, um, for asynchronous uh, PDF generation, for instance. So this is something that we've done. Um, and also all the security parts. So the, 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 the Mapfish print, so the, the back end of the print, will call the different layers and see that, uh, uh, verify that the user can use these layers, etc. So they, there is a back end, but also that, that's true that the templates, that's, that, that's just probably about templates, yeah. Any more questions? Okay, I have one. Um, yes. Where do you see your project in five years' time? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> um, I think that um, yeah, maybe the, the the 3D part is quite interesting. So for now, it's the beginning. We have only like two projects, I would say. So that's something that we can uh, uh, continue and improve, um, not improve, but uh, may add, add functionalities and uh, have more projects with 3D. Uh, one other thing that is interesting, I, say, I think, is the offline part. We have one project with uh, offline um, uh, features, uh, so to download the, the data <coughs> and to use uh, uh, offline. Um, this is something that we would like to integrate in the, in the project. Uh, in, in, the, in the core of uh, GeoMapFish. For now, it's not in the core. Um, yeah, those are for the, 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 the new features, I would say. Yeah. Okay, uh, anybody else? Yes. Are there any plans uh, in uh, migration from uh, AngularJS uh, to Angular? Yes, uh, we are thinking about that, of course. Um, the problem is that uh, ha we have this community of, uh, of public agencies mainly, <laughs> and as you know, it, <laughs> it takes time to, to, to migrate, and so um, we cannot just uh, change to Angular right now. But of course, uh, our teams uh, that are up to date, <laughs> they are thinking of the uh, next steps, and yes, of course, we will move to, uh, to Angular. Mm -hmm. 